scramble on defense here. Can they find their way towards the box? Welcome clear. Hey, hang on with that clear as time expires. One more chance. Pass over to Sebadam. Puts it just above the cross. Can they recover? Three for Dana Hall, Mama! Zero seconds tie game! Holding firm is the dude's deep. And it was super sad for Timon. Oh my goodness, but super amazing for Joe Freshness! What up and welcome to Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into your favorite esports and today it's your most favorite of all. It's car soccer, baby. Rocket League. I'm Brady Moore and this is Marissa Rabauto. And there's so much to catch up on Rocket League. Okay, you really <laughs> The RLRS plans, RLCS Season 7, we got all that hype ready for you. That's right, no doubt okay. we will get to RLCS in just a minute. But first, we're going to chat Rival Series play-ins. Did you miss it? Well, fear not, because here are the highlights. Four goals in this series against the like three for team yellow and prank. 14 goals and a 15th by Mark by eight as it must for afterthought. Hato to the corner. The shock into the left hand still in. A huge goal for shock and they might get one off the kickoff. They've got them all beat and afterthought blow everyone's mind. And Birds and Bees doing a much better job now. They're finding this ball in the midfield, not letting the dudes out, but maybe a double Whoa. tap from Joe Freshness. Oh, 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 oh. Beautiful touch from him. Now no one home. The net was relatively open, and Data not able to finish it off. Now 2v1, swoop in, makes some of them jump for it. Uh oh, and it's Data still going in. And get the hit that he was looking for, swoop in. That will open a big hole and just crush downfield. Holy oh. Noli is able to catch it. Whoa, Mama, where'd that come from? Holy moly, holy Noli does it. Holding firm is the dude's D. And it was super sad for Timon. Oh my goodness, but super amazing for Joe Freshness. ARG to scramble on defense here. Can they find their way towards the That's box? A welcome clear. Hey, hang on with that clear as time expires. One more chance. Pass over to Sebadam. Puts it just above the cross. Can they recover? Three for Dana Hall, Mama. Zero seconds tie game. Okay, wasn't the best touch from Aldente. He tried to find Sebadam. Now marked by a nice pass. pass. Shot. Goal. GCR takes the lead for ART. Bump almost making it happen. Now Skyline in a 1v1 situation. Oh, he's in the mind game. Skyline. Into this battle for possession on the midfield line. A free ball for Alpha Cap as T. Corral tips the demo. The demo will open the door. NCPS will convert. With six teams in North America and four teams in Europe that move on. And congrats to everyone that, of course, made it into the Rival Series. Now, I know I was there, but Marissa, I can't do this alone with just you. Yeah. Uh, you're dragging me down. So we're bringing in Nick Vaudeville and Brozick. <laughs> What's Why up, buddy? Why are you the worst person ever? <laughs> uh, that's like, great. What? I'm Hi. doing pretty good. Oh, my gosh. So happy to have you. Uh, obviously, we all worked together at one point uh, doing mm -hmm. a gnarly that's forever qualifiers. Ago. Yeah. Oh, forever, that's fun. Forever, ever. So happy to have you. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to share a little bit of my knowledge and hopefully help fill in those gaps. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right, uh, let's just jump into plans. Had a lot of uh, names who some people are probably unfamiliar with mm -hmm. um, to the people at home, but the action was, of course, uh, always awesome. Uh, it seems like it's uh, just an awesome chance for like new people to put out their uh, stories and, and just yeah. follow new. Uh, there's a couple specifically I'm excited about. We'll talk about like Joe Freshness, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but to get their storylines out there, what's the importance of having like an open bracket like this to play into the rival series? Well, the open bracket kind of makes it more accessible for a lot of people instead of having just a closed qualification, only a certain amount of invited teams. If there are teams that just form the day of, they can actually qualify that day too. And we kind of saw that happen in the European region as well. Hmm. Uh, I do, we want to hit North America first, right. of course. We like to break these up. Let's start like, with them. Right? North yeah. America and Europe. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll split it up. We'll keep it organized there. Uh, so in terms of like recognizable names right off yeah. the bat, um, Afterthought probably had the most with a couple RLCS uh, uh, veterans there, uh, Tana, Tyler, and Hato. Uh, was the experience difference between them and the rest of the squads like super obvious from mm. your perspective? Uh, from my perspective, after watching the plans and seeing these teams perform in other tournaments like the Renegade Cup, it seems that most of the rival series teams are going to give them a run for their money. Most people are actually saying that Afterthought aren't going to make top four as well because of how competitive it is. Wow. What, what are your thoughts on it, though? Like, do you think they're going to be <laughs> easy thoughts? shoeing? Uh, I don't think it's going to be an easy shoe, and just because of how much more competitive Rocket League as a whole has become, and the gap is kind of shortened compared to the previous seasons from what we've seen. Mm -hmm. 
Um, of the names that I didn't know, probably one of them that impressed us the most was Joe Freshness, yeah. of course, of the dudes who showed no nerves, pulling some really mechanically skilled plays. Uh, Brody told me before we sat down that the whole broadcast was loving him. So talk to me about dudes and Joe Freshness specifically. Well, the dudes has been a name that's been around in the rival series since it got announced the first time. They've mm -hmm. qualified for the first season, had some struggles here and there, made a different roster changes, had people come in like Joro, who was on Rogue for a second. And then we had a lot of other players like Ralph and AXB, but now Joe Freshness, he kind of rounds out that roster, bringing them that all-star power because he's able to just get as many goals as possible. I think he got like 12 during the play-in, so he's definitely a player I'm going to be looking out for during the rival series league play. Now the question though is, is mechanics like Joe Freshness enough mm. in the rival series? We mentioned like everyone's getting so good. Is that enough now for uh, a, just a player like that to shine through and be able to not carry, but you know, give that extra boost to a team mm. to make it to the top? Or is there gonna be a little bit more needed from the dudes? Mm. Ooh, I, I feel like they have what is needed. They just need to iron out some of the mistakes they make, obviously, with rotations and defense here and there. A lot of these teams have consistency as their main issue, and if they can work that out, they're going to just rise to the top and maybe even make it into the RLCS after the promotion tournament. Uh, of the other teams that made it into the rival series, Upper 90, Birds and the Vs, Plot good. Twist and Defiant, which one of them looks the most RLRS ready? Ooh, that's definitely for me having to be birds and the bees. They mm -hmm. were the old afterthought roster after some changeups happened. We have Hoxer, Mist, and Roll Diz, Rama and then Fire as their sub. They have just been performing quite well for themselves in the offseason. They even qualified for WSOE during that and took down a bunch of RLCS teams. They don't have Shock, but Shock is also an afterthought, so it's going to be a little bit of a rivalry going on between those teams. That <laughs> that's going to be good. Well, I mean, were there any players who either qualified or failed to make it that caught your eye and maybe you want to give a specific shout out to? Oh, goodness. I want to give a shout out to a team specifically, uh, RBG Esports. They were so close to qualifying. Mm. They've been working their hardest. They are probably the most consistent roster in the offseason as well. Always getting top eight in every tournament they competed and they just couldn't get past that last hurdle. And that was the consistency factor. It just kind of fell apart after we saw them get in the lower bracket and even Sway Esports, everyone expected them to come out on top. They were the first seed and they were out early as well. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're number yeah. one seed. Yeah. And uh, they just they just get rocked. Of... In a perfect series too. They got they got three owed in the lower bracket and didn't score a single goal. What happened? What happened, dude? Yeah. That was RBG Esports. They took them down. They just had the momentum going after all the wins yeah. they were racking up. They weren't able to get the last one, unfortunately, to qualify, but it just seems like Sway was just off for the majority of that bracket. They had like two or three best of fives against teams they should not have any reason to lose to. So after losing in the qualifying match of the upper bracket, they just couldn't handle it, it seemed. Uh, okay, well, let's spend a few minutes on Europe as well because there were some super interesting teams there for sure. Um, yeah, there were fewer, just a reminder, yeah. there were fewer RLRS spots too because there were only uh, four. So it's like yeah. it was even more competitive. Which um, So like of all the teams uh, that made it in uh, in the upper bracket, the right stuff and Baguette squad there, mm -hmm. uh, they looked very solid. Uh, extra on Baguette uh, squad won MVP of the Plains. Mm -hmm. uh, should fans be excited to see him in action? I'd say they should be excited to see them in action, especially because a lot of these teams, people didn't expect them to make it in. We also saw the number one seed not making it into the rival series again in Europe, but they even had more disparity with lower seeds qualifying as well. So Europe just has so much depth compared to North America. It's a toss up again, even more so for who's going to come out on top for that series. ARG is a team that's been on the cusp for a while, and finally they make it into the Rival Series. So walk us through their journey and what this must mean to them. Well, since they've been competing for such a long time and now they're finally able to qualify, it just validifies what the work they've been putting in and shows everyone that they are here to compete at the top level, and they're going to try and go all the way up to the RLCS if they can make it there. Now, my question, we did see them during the Renegade Cup, um, which we were there for, um, but they did end up, of course, not really having much of a chance against Savage, who are an RLCS team. Uh, how, much, how much more work do you think ARG, like, do you think ARG has what it takes now to get into that promo relegation tourney and make it up to the, to the RLCS, or they got a bit of work to do? 
Uh, I feel like every team has a little bit of work to do to Fair. get to that RLCS level, especially speaking back on that consisti consistency. I'm going to keep going back to that because that's really the difference maker between Rival Series level and RLCS level. They have a lot of the same mechanical skill. It's just when they're able to pull it off consistently during the matches that matter. And we saw that from ARG when they qualified. So hopefully they can continue that going into league play for the Rival Series. Mm -hmm. So uh, another team that a lot of people were hyped up on for a bit because they did really well at DreamHack, but Team Echo Zulu was missing uh, here. Was this like a surprise? Uh, or did you think maybe, ah, no, that was a honeymoon. I expected this. I mean, it might have been a honeymoon. A lot of changes happen between teams in the Rival Series qualifiers. Yeah. And some of them just, because it's a one-day qualifier, they have to show up then. And if they don't show up then, then it's just not going to work out for a lot of these teams. And they have to wait six months. So maybe it was just a honeymoon phase. Hopefully, they'll be able to maybe come back and reform and get yeah, another chance at next season. But it happens all the time with a lot of these teams. And I expect to see even more Team Echo Zulu stories happening in mm. future dream hacks as well. Well, speaking of teams not making the cut, Nordavind was not oh. playing <laughs> up to their potential. Uh, Data had a good showing, but was this just the case of the whole team just missing the mark when it mattered? It happens a lot of times with these teams in the European region where they get kind of complacent when they have already qualified in previous series for the rival series. So then they think, oh, it's just going to be a wash going in. But because of how competitive it is, they can't really afford to take their foot off the gas pedal. They have to train as hard as possible. And it seems that Nordovan just maybe didn't want it as much as the other teams who are trying to qualify. All right, Fadal, but we're going to add some boost and kick it up a notch here because the RLCS starts this weekend as we need to get prepared. So before we talk all about it, let's refresh ourselves on all the insane moments from last year. Violet Panda puts it straight out. It's going to be over to Kano. It's almost there. Fadal scores. Justin keeps it alive. Turbos are there. Bounces into the corner. Energy still around. Justin is there for the shot. Justin! Justin! This is Rocket League! They did it! Turbo Pulse with it up high. Gets the flick. Turbo! Back to back world champions. Team Dignitas! Torma gives this one away. Squishy's airborne, keeping it here in the midfield, giving himself options. He's got Squishy. the open in front of him. He got it it. underneath! Oh my goodness! That clear will do it. Cloud9 secure their chance to challenge Dignitas in the finals. It'll be North America versus Europe for the World Championship. Squishy into the corner. Another touch. Pass out into the middle. Torma is there! And they won't make and it out! That is it! The streak! Squishy pounces to itself. He gets Flip, it. Racing. Can he do it? Squishy he it. Does it go in? Torment finishes it off. Cloud nine. They are about to do the unthinkable. They've done it. Cloud nine dethrones the kings of Rocket League. And they do it. Cloud nine, your season six world champion. Bruh, 2018 was a sick year in the RLCS, and I'm so hyped for Season 7 to start. Mm -hmm. Let's get this preview started, though, with G2 in North America. Mm -hmm. G2 had a pretty uh, middling offseason, you know, with WSOE and DreamHack, uh, despite the promise of the roster showed with Chicago. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe they have a honeymoon phase that uh, is now going to be okay coming into the season. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Everyone always rags on G2's yeah. offseason, yeah. but when it comes to league play, they are the kings. They are able to perform time and time again. So I don't think we can start doubting them yet until we see them lose a few matches to some of the lower level teams that are in the RLCS. So I don't think we should start doubting them until we see those kind of results because of how consistent the roster as a whole. I feel like Chicago just brings a whole nother level of energy to this roster also. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think the Chicago um, push in there and the drop of Kronovi was mm -hmm. the right decision? I feel like it might be. Kronovi's been around in the scene for such a long time, and his 
devotion to maybe practicing and being the best, mm. as we've seen with his recent results with Rogue, maybe was to the detriment of the team itself. So they bring in some fresh blood, which is Chicago, who's a uh, hot on the scene. He came all the way from the rival series, got brought onto a team in RLCS, and then he's looking to just make it big and go for the stars and maybe get the world championship title under his belt. And I'm sure that's what uh, JNAPS and Rizzo both want for their team. And they've been so close so many times, but the world championship is usually where they struggle. So maybe this time they'll Bro, be able to perform there. Wins land. I know. That's going to be insane. But seriously, That'd be it feels great. bad for Kenobi. Like, I love him so much. And I just yeah. don't, I don't, it's fine. He'll, he's fine. He'll, he'll be fine be forever. Fine. <laughs> he'll be okay. Just feels, man. Uh, two teams, I'm super excited for our splice mm. and bread coming in from the rival series. But as much as I love friend of the show, no dude. <laughs> and I'm excited to see him play uh, these teams. I'm a bit nervous because in the past, mm. the promoted teams have kind of been revolving a revolving door here. So yeah. <laughs> do you think that Spice and Bread have what it takes to actually shake things up? I feel like Splice and Bread have a different level of dedication to practice before the league play itself is ever going to start. This weekend is actually going to be pretty great to see them on the stream. But Splice, they haven't really been focusing on anything in the offseason. Their results maybe not the greatest, but Karma mentioned time and time again that their 100% focus is on league play and to perform. And hopefully they're able to come up with those results they want. And Bread, they've been doing quite well for themselves even at the Dream Hacks and in the offseason. Season two, so I'm sure they're going to continue that. They might be more middle of the pack compared to some of the other teams that we've seen, and I'm kind of worried a little bit about Rogue itself. Yeah, no. well, well you're, don't, don't tell her that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I guess just for the two of them, they both have a pretty um, rough week one, I'd say. I mean, again, G2 oh, <laughs> against Bread and, and then C9 and Splice. Like, who do you think is going to have, uh, I, I think I can answer that, but who do you think is going to have a better chance to grab that first <laughs> win? Uh, I think, oh my goodness, uh, Splice probably because they have two matches, so obviously they have a better chance facing off against Ghost is most likely the match that they'd be oh, able to at true, least yeah. take a win there. Bread facing off against G2, that's really going to be the test of the G2 roster facing off against this hot mm -hmm. off the scene uh, from the Rival Series team of Bread, and they are going to be going with a so much fury trying to make it all the way in it to the world championships and prove themselves even more so. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is this is a bigger question. We haven't established like top three in North America, but mm. uh, the biggest question is that middle of the pack, in this case, Ghost, EG, Rogue. Can they challenge the top now? Do you think they're getting close? I mean, especially with Ghost with that illusion ad, mm. EG with, with Drip A, do you think they have what it takes to kind of make it a top six and eight? So that's a really tough question. A lot of people have been heavily debating this as well. I know Ghost and EG, since the roster changes that they have made, they've taken a little bit to get used to, but Ghost look a lot better with Illusion compared to Zane Jackie. And EG, with the roster change from OCE, they look pretty solid, but still going to take a little bit of work to get to that level of the top three energy, G2 and C9. So if they put the work in, they can do it. It's just going to maybe take another season for them to challenge the top and hopefully maybe take the reins from NRG who have been just mm. dominating the scene so far. Okay, so I know it's way too early to make finals predictions, <laughs> but if you were to say an NA team in the finals, I mean, what would you say NRG? Ooh. I'd say either NRG, uh, it, it's a toss up between the top three at this point, NRG, yeah. G2, or C9. It could be either of them. Cloud9, they've been very consistent with their performances as well, obviously coming off of that world championship win. NRG, they are desperate for a victory for those finals. Yeah. They've gotten to it. They just were so close, but they just weren't able to get the victory. And G2, they have a lot to prove to their fans and themselves. So it's a toss up between all three of those. That's true. All right, let's move over to Europe right now because there's, uh, there's, it's a little more interesting <laughs> and spread out here. Um, one, question, one question for all of you. That's it. No, we got lots. But <laughs> the question right now is, is this Vitality season? Like, it looks like they're a little bit better mm. off now. They do look a lot more confident going into mm. this as well, and they've had great results against other teams. They've been scaring Dignitas after their roster yep. changes, obviously, with Fairy Peak, Scrub Killer, and KDOP. They look very solid, and they've been working out in the scrims a little bit, so maybe that'll help them out going into the season. And it's going to be a rivalry between them and PSG because they keep going back and forth in sets as well, and that team has been looking pretty solid. Crazy about PSG. Mm. Uh, I do want, I need to know though, can Vitality, Dignitas, 
be challenged by X flip side moving forward with speed? Ooh, I think it's possible, but it's going to really rely on how well speed is able to rise to the challenge. We saw him during WSOE where they got the victory there. They haven't really shown too much after that, though. So we might need to see more results in league play before we can say if they're ever going to be able to challenge Vitality and Dignitas. Hmm. Um, now, I think the TSM need to prove uh, E-League and RLCS wasn't a fluke again because they've kind of not had the best results um, sure. after that. It's a bit, of a, a bit of a question mark. Are you worried about them at all? Or do you think kicking back into league play, they're going to be just fine? I'm not too worried, but seeing those poor results and showings at WSOE and DreamHack mm. is kind of telling of the complacency we see from a lot of these teams. After they get those kind of good finishes or victories, then they go into the other terms. They think, oh, it's just going to be a walk in the park. But because of how close Europe is, it's really you have to put your A game in or you're not going to get to world championships. And that's what we're probably going to see between most of these teams that are competing this season. That's going to be tough. Okay, so there's a mix of new faces and veterans coming into the game. Of course, it's awesome to see Bluey if mm -hmm. his attitude's <laughs> in check. Uh, Diva <laughs> back in the scene and bringing Alpha with them. And of course, the three rookies on Triple Trouble. So who are you most excited to see? Honestly, for me, I feel like it's Bluey Ooh, just to Savage see the turnaround. Is, yeah, Savage is looking solid. Yeah. Savage, yeah, as Brody mentioned, Savage have looked the best out of the two teams. Triple Trouble, they have had some trouble in paradise with their roster a few times and trying to make everything work in the offseason. I love the guys on Triple Trouble, Ronicky, Tadpole, and Cassio, great guys all around. But Devo, Blue, and Alpha, it seems they just have more talent. And I hate to say that in Rocket League, it's a lot about yeah. mechanics and how much work you put into it. But these three players have just proven themselves taking down Dignitas and all the other RLCS teams consistently. And as long as it doesn't get to their head, they're going to be looking pretty good going into this league play. Well, that's what I was going to say. What I mean, like, obviously they're looking solid, but we do know there can be some volatility yeah. um, if, if players, you know, maybe drive too hard or get in their own teammates' heads. What can be some of the, the issues you might see for Savage coming into league play? Is it like if they don't get a good start, they might fall apart or... What's going to be their biggest hurdle? Yeah, if they don't get a good start, they could fall apart. If they aren't able to get their first few victories in league play, they, they face Dignitas. So if they get that, they're going to be solid. They're just going to be riding off that energy going into the remainder of the weeks of the season. But if they lose that one, they face off against Vitality, which will yeah. be a struggle there too in week two. So they just have to keep their wits about them go at it as best as they have before and they're going to look pretty solid but it, it might just be some inner turmoil that could turn them off from being a top team this season that's the thing hmm. there's like there's not really any easy schedules for anybody anymore yeah, <laughs> yeah. <'Cause everyone's> like, <laughs> <laughs> okay then so across the board then is eu more balanced or maybe more top heavy than na i'd say eu is you and like way above the level of uh, balance compared to NA because we have a solidified top three with G2, NRG, and Cloud9 here. Especially this season, I, I have no idea. Most people are kind of putting like maybe Triple Trouble or Mouse at like the, the lower end, but even them have been putting in a lot of work, so they might be able to shake up the standings in the few weeks that happened for league play. Damn. Now, just uh, just way early predictions if you had to pick just your your top team to represent each region right now um before we let you go who's who is that well i'm still gonna go with dignitas because they have the consistent results they haven't shown that they look any worse with UKO or yukio yeah. because they've put in so much work with that roster even in the off season and you know turbo pulse and violent panda they yeah. are one hey, of the Three, most consistent players in the RLCS, so they're going to continue with that grind and try and take it all the way to the top. And even when that team hasn't gotten the top of league play, they've still performed well in the World Championship, so they'll look good. And then Cloud9 have the consistency. They pretty much figured out the way to counter a lot of these European mm -hmm. teams after their last performance. Thrive so in chaos. they're going to be looking dangerous. Exactly. They thrive in that chaos. They're able to pull off the crazy flip reset, ceiling shots, and we're probably going to see plenty more from them as well. Oh, dude, I'm excited. Like Vado, my friend, it's been a pleasure chatting Rocket League, but we are out of time, unfortunately. I'll uh, see you around. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's been a pleasure. All right, so let's quickly wrap this up with the greater RLCS picture, shall we? Because yesterday, Brody, mm -hmm. you read some news and you oh. lost your damn mind. So, <laughs> yeah, oh. you, what, can we, yeah. we, 
Ready! Oh my god, come back! We have to talk about eSports support shop. Yes. You're, okay, oh my goodness. So hype. Okay. I just made a whirlwind. I feel it. Okay. <laughs> the gush that came here. Okay, why is this exciting? This is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's something that the, the community's been wanting for so long. Mm. Psyonix talked, then announced it uh, last year that they're gonna be working on it. And now it's before the end of season seven. It's now come earlier than we thought mm. it would. Um, April 16th is their tentative date, just making as long as everything goes perfect. Yeah, yeah. And now there's gonna be support for items uh, likely, I'm assuming, okay. or I don't know, maybe it's merch, whatever it is, mm. whatever their shop is, is gonna be great for the orgs because now orgs are gonna be like, yo, we can get in, like, yeah, yeah. now we're excited, we can make money back on this. Yeah. We, you know, it's it's just gonna bring more teams in. Like, okay, um, cool. you know, we've already seen some big teams, but there are a lot of unsigned teams right now. Yes, right? So, so many. I'm assuming we're gonna start seeing a lot of bigger orgs, um, you know, from other esports starting to drop in. Like Crazy. I, I, yeah, like like I, we might see an Echo Fox, we might see... I'd love to see that, some ninjas in pajamas. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know if teams are already working on, on stuff, but this is this is what we needed to help solidify that. Okay, the Rocket League Esports 2019 okay. is the thing. Yeah, you were just losing your mind a little bit about it because you're just reading the news and you couldn't even, yeah, couldn't even deal. I guess, because like in my mind, like when you were talking about it, it almost made it seem like it, there was going to be like highlight reels. There's going to be like even more to it, but it's just like a shot basically. Yeah, okay. So so the the whole um, patch, I guess, yeah. that, that's coming out, or like the, the announcement, the blog post that they put out, mm. was that there's other things too. And this is fantastic because so many people like Doomsy have been asking mm. for more tools yeah. um, for the... Um, uh, for doing video editing and mm -hmm. stuff, because those guys already make absolutely incredible videos, right? Oh my gosh, videos, they're so right? amazing, but it takes them so long to make. Uh-huh, and now adding more tools. So now they have like video effects tools that mm. you can you know, change the bokeh, all your depth of field, um, and just get really cool cinematic shots. And I'm imagining, again, I don't know what's in it, but I'm imagining some filters, anything that's gonna make these videos and montages just look sick. I mean, I used to, my brother used to show me all the time these uh, Team Fortress 2 uh, montages were, yeah. uh, or, or CSGO montages where people would build like new engines and just do really cool things yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and then Rocket League already looks like there's already a lot of great tools, but this is going to get us to that point. Heck yeah, it's like the smooth action replays where you can like zoom in, zoom out, it doesn't really matter. Like we don't have to rely on the actual mm -hmm. broadcast replay, but they can actually go in and retool. There's nothing better than a good montage. I mean, uh -huh. I guess I didn't need more things to get you excited about Rocket League, right. but I feel yeah, like you you've, you've peaked. Is this your... Is it as hype as you Maybe. can get? I mean, until, uh, except for when it, April 16th, tentatively, <laughs> is, is that's when I'm peaking. That, that's, oh, it's gonna be so hype. Um, the biggest news in that blog post, oh. though, hands down, had to be, we're getting more Monster Cat flags. Uh, <laughs> I just, like, my curious? favorite thing, yeah, no, my favorite thing was just kind of tagged on at the end. It's like, so many people, <laughs> I mean, it's still sick, because I love Monster Cat. Yeah. But it's just kind of funny to see the eSports shop that everyone has been waiting for yeah. for so long. Uh, my Twitter feed yesterday was just, that's yeah. all it was, was yeah. about the eSports shop. Um, they just kind of tagged on, yeah, you know, we got more uh, more Monster Cat flags for you guys. The flags, just they can be lit. Yeah, they no, it, it, it's sick. Like, honestly, this is this is huge. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Sonics has um, uh, really cool plans. Like, it's just 2019 is the year of the car ball. Like, straight up. Uh, I mean, I don't disagree with you. I've been feeling like Rocket League has been on the peak or the cusp of their, I don't know, it's like their time to shine. I feel like this could be mm -hmm. it. So I just feel like it's also just that eSport that can bring everybody in. People that don't understand eSports, this is the game, this is the genre, this is the time for Rocket League. I'm just so excited that you're such a huge part of it, Brody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love I love Rocket League. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we, we got to wrap it up. She's probably going to murder me soon. Because <laughs> I got actually got a flight to catch yeah. out to the RLCS. I'm so hooked it's back. Uh, and I hope you guys at home are as well. Uh, yeah, definitely. Especially thanks to having you around. And thanks to you for tuning in. And remember, tomorrow on Esports and 30, it's FPS Day where Zerk and I will talk all things Call of Duty Pro League. If you like the show and want more, follow us on all the socials at Squad Date. We out.